So you mentioned Rattler as the other guy, and, and we'll get to Bo Nix in just a second. But what what is it specifically that you like so much about Rattler? And is it just going to be for him dependent? Like we've heard a lot of wild discrepancy in what the NFL coaches think of Rattler. Mm-hmm. Is it just going to be dependent on where he ends up going on draft day? Well, I think he might end up being a backup too. And it wouldn't surprise me if he had the path that kind of starts out like Dak where he's the backup to a good quarterback. Like imagine him going to Dallas. He's a round two, round three pick where the Cowboys take as a leverage play just in case they decide to move on from Dak. And then he eventually gets the opportunity. I think he's got good enough mechanics. I think he's got a strong arm. I think he does throw with good touch at times. Took care of the football most of the time. Obviously, pressure was not very good to him. Um, He also ran a little bit more of a simplistic offense than we'd like to give him credit for. Um, And he loved he he definitely had big eyes for the big play, kind of like Caleb Williams had more of a downfield thrower would run at times. But I don't think he's necessarily a dual threat type of quarterback. And then there's other things in his past that kind of makes you scratch your head and that an NFL front office would have to be comfortable with when it comes to Rattler. But I think he's just a little bit more aggressive and has a good strong arm compared to Bo Nix. Bo has a strong arm too. I just think Rattler's aggressiveness, the fact that he takes care of the football most of the time, those are things that stand out to me. Okay, Thor. So uh, you said several months ago, J.J. McCarthy is not a late round two prospect. He's a top 10 prospect. When you look at Spencer Rattler, late round two, is that too high, too low, or just about right for him? It's right around there. I I think I'll have um, him early to mid third. Uh, so right around there, I, I do have Rattler ahead of Bo Nix, uh, Rattler, I, I have him behind Penix. I have him, uh, well, that'd be QB six. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I have him there. There's, um, he'd be the guy I'd take a chance on if you miss out on, on those top guys, you know, sort of the next stop on, on the train stop. And, and he's the only other guy that I see in this class that has the potential to, uh, be, you know, give you starting utility potentially. I think that there's a path there. People need to remember this was the number 11 overall player in his recruiting class. The first ever guy that Lincoln Riley had plucked out of high school that had started for him. Like prior to that, it was all those guys that were the transfer portal guys, you know, Kyler and and Jalen Hurts and Baker Mayfield. And then it was Rattler and Rattler was incredible. His first year as a starter, he was number four in the FBS and PFF grade as a redshirt freshman. He led the FBS and PFF big time throws under pressure and passing grade out of structure. He was getting a vote to Pat Mahomes in terms of that coming out of his redshirt freshman season. But then, of course, a guy named Caleb Williams, who we talked about earlier, shows up in Norman, and then Lincoln Riley started talking to USC, and then the whole thing happened. And then Spencer Rattler ends up in Columbia, South Carolina, which, you know, it was great that he found a home. It turned out to be a terrible stylistic uh, match for him, though, because South Carolina, while they had skill talent, they had a horrific offensive line that ranked outside the top 100 in PFF pass blocking grade both seasons. This was a horrible fit specifically for Spencer Rattler's game because as Dave was alluding to, Spencer Rattler, it's it's sort of like both uh, Caleb or, uh, you know, I, I um, it's sort of like Bryce Young from the last class where he likes to do the, the scramble around thing uh, to buy time and then, and then throw, but he likes to stay behind the line of scrimmage to do it. You can't buy time behind a horrific offensive line where you're getting immediate pressure. So the first 10 games of 2022, Spencer Rattler was dead to rights right after he got the ball. He had to modify his game. That happened at the end of 2022. He lit up uh, Clemson. He lit up Tennessee. He lit up Notre Dame in the bowl game. And then this year, uh, the coaching staff helped him out a bit. by There was more quick hitting concepts to keep the pass rush at bay. They had way less offensive talent. It was basically Xavier Leggett and pray for rain because everyone else transferred out. But but at least they had made some of those modifications. But but I like his – he's he's on the small side for sure, but he has a very snappy arm. And yet, like Dave was mentioning, he has that gumption to go downfield, and he's always looking downfield. So he will attack. He also attacks the middle sector of the field, those NFL money zones like we were talking about before. Has he been scarred by the last couple of years behind that shoddy offensive line? That's what we'll have to find out. But I, I would pay the the I, I would buy the ticket to get on that carnival ride somewhere in that first part of the third round to find out with him if I missed out on those quarterbacks early on. 